Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Hope you're having an awesome weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and I think it's safe to say that the seasons have officially changed. Now, at least where I'm at in northern Michigan, we went from you know, low to mid 60s down to mid to upper 20s in a foot of snow quite literally overnight. Now, this type of weather, this is easily four weeks ahead of what is typical. And if you're in the northern area, marinas are right now, they're in full swing trying to get boats hauled out before winter. And a lot of boaters as well, they're trying to get some last minute projects squeaked in before the well, before the snow flies. Now, this isn't going to stick around, at least not where we're at. Uh, we're supposed to be back up into the 60s and 70s here over the weekend. But nonetheless, it is a little bit of a jolt. And with the, the temperatures dropping the way that they have been and being inconsistent as they have been, uh, it can make some, some of these last minute projects a little tricky. So if you're one of these folks that has some projects coming up, I mean, the reality is you're, you're going to have to pick and choose your battles, right? Especially if you're going to be working with composites because they are temperature sensitive. Uh, just as a, you know, real briefly here, epoxies, depending on the hardener that you're using, epoxies can be used down to about 45 degrees pretty safely. Uh, whereas with polyester resins, I've done some, some work with 60 and 60 degree Fahrenheit temps and it worked. Uh, but kind of the, the, the general understanding is that that threshold really should be closer to like 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, with that said, there are some cheats that you can that can be done to kind of make it work even though you know the temperatures out outside are not in your favor and that's what we're going to be covering today Now, when you're talking about doing composite work outside when it's cool, and by cool I mean, say, 30 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly zero degrees Celsius, when you're talking about working outside in those temps, uh, other th all other things considered, you know, so that your resin is still good, it's, it hasn't gone old, and it's been catalyzed properly. Setting those aside, there's really only two factors that matter, and that is the temperature of the surface that you're working on, as well as the temperature of the resin. So what we have here are a couple of cheats uh, between the lights and this cooler. Now this cooler, this is going to be a warming box. So we've got an electric uh, heating pad inside of there. And then I also stuck a little temperature probe through the side here. So we'll be able to measure uh, what the temperature is actually, you know, what's going on inside of here. Now what, what this is going to be used for is a warming box for our resin. So we'll be able to pour up any, any you know, whether it's epoxy or poly, we'll be able to pull up whatever we need and then stick it in there uncatalyzed. You know, that's the whole point. You just want to warm the resin. You don't necessarily want to catalyze it and stick it back in this box because, well, <laughs> it's going to melt the styrofoam. Now, the lights, on the other hand, this is how we're going to be cheating the surface temperature of the area that we're working on. Uh, specifically, when you're looking at these types of lights, you need to get halogen. I know halogen is not a very efficient type of uh, light source, but it does one thing very, very well, which is throws off a ton of heat, even over a fairly decent distance. Let's go outside and take some temperature readings just so we know where we're at. So I'm going to be using one of these now just for reference. The outside temperature here is about 33, 34 degrees. 
a little bit chilly. Now the panel itself, I brought the panel out about an hour ago uh, just to start cooling off because it's been in the shop, which is heated. And the panel itself is, what's that saying? About 42 degrees. And the inside of the cooler, actually down to 40. So let me get everything plugged in and turned on and uh, let it do its thing here. There's a few things that I need to stress specifically about using these lights. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, the lights that we're using, they're halogen lights. And that's, that's an important detail. Uh, LEDs will not work for this. So, you know, the reason we're using halogen is because they throw off a lot of heat, especially over at the, it's, it's like a radiant heat, I guess. Uh, and that can be a good thing. I mean, for our purpose here, that's, that's really what we're looking for. But it can also be a very dangerous thing. So right now, the lights on here have only been on for maybe three, four, five minutes, give or take. Now, this panel was originally, what, we, what was it, like 44 degrees? And we're already up to 64, almost 65. And that's just within a couple of minutes. Now, where this can become a dangerous situation is if, uh, well, let, let me back up here. There are two things that I, I, I just, I cannot stress enough when you're using something like this. One, never, ever, ever leave these lights unattended. You know, don't turn, don't turn them on and then walk across the marina to go grab a bite to eat or do whatever. If these lights are on the panel or on your boat, you're, you've gotta be standing right next to it. The reason being, this wouldn't be the first time and I, I've, over the years, it doesn't happen very often, but I have heard of and have seen about a half a dozen times where boats have damn near caught on fire because the lights were just too close. Now, when I first turn these on, it doesn't feel like you're getting a whole lot of heat on the panel itself, but give it 15, 20, 30 minutes. Let the, let the heat slowly do its thing. Temperature is, is what, we're, what we're trying to chase down here. Uh, that surface, it doesn't matter if the surface itself is say like at 65 degrees. That temperature needs to be able to penetrate into the panel a little bit so that the, you know, the, so you don't, you don't have like a, just a warm surface and then directly behind that is still 40 some degrees. You wanna slowly warm up the surface so that it's uniform temperature at least, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get uniform uh, temperature throughout the full thickness of the laminate, most likely, but you wanna, you wanna make sure that the panel is thoroughly warmed. So what kind of surface temperature are we shooting for? Ideally, I'd like to see around 70 degrees. Um, you know, no warmer than that. So basically, you want, it, you want the surface to feel warm to the touch, but never hot. Never, ever, ever hot. If you're, if you're trying to do this on a painted surface and that surface gets hot, you're going to blister your paint. Uh, if it's your gel coat, it just may, any material that you lay up on top of there may just cure too rapidly and it, it just becomes... You know, it just, it doesn't, it, it's not as good as if I, if I were to take a slow, normal cure cycle. And as it stands right now, I would say these lights are almost 24 inches away from the panel. So I would say if you're setting something like this up to start, start with it around that two foot, maybe two and a half feet away from the surface that you're trying to warm. Now these lights, uh, these are like, these are the, the, the cheapy ones. I mean, you can get some of these uh, halogen work lights where they actually have two bulbs in each of these uh, little things here. Two bulbs is gonna throw out twice the amount of heat as one. So if, if that's the case, you're gonna wanna have these lights set further back than two, two and a half feet, maybe closer to three or possibly even four might be a little bit far away, but it's better to start a little bit too far away and then let it, let it do its thing for 20, 30 minutes. If the surface isn't coming up to temperature, move it ahead, you know, six, eight inches, and just slowly, you know, kind of creep up onto it that way. Again, I cannot stress enough, what you do not want is to have these lights too close and either burn your gel coat, bubble your paint, or worst case scenario, actually light, light, get, light the glass on fire. <laughs> I had to come inside to warm up. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. Let's go see where things are at. Well, we're up to 85 right there. Now, something I want to kind of highlight here, depending on where I go, I, when I go up to the very top, now we're back down to eh, about 60 degrees. 
and then come down to the bottom. Again, well, it's warmer down at the bottom. Now, as far as what's going on in the cooler, uh, see, so here's my little meter app. I can't read it right now. So inside the cooler, it is currently about 79, 80 degrees. And evidently my battery is low. <laughs> so on the warming box, I'm sure that there's some sort of a, like a safety limit on there as far as how hot it will actually go, because I can guarantee you somebody sued someone because they got burnt by an electric blanket. So I'm sure that, you know, being capped out at 80 degrees, that's just like a safety setting that's built into, you know, the switch or the, you know, somewhere in that heating blanket. So now as far as the heat in the cooler being around, around that 80 degree mark, I personally, I think that's about perfect. Um, having, warming your resin up to that point, it does one, well, a couple of things. Uh, for one, it, because the resin is going to be that warm, it greatly uh, reduces the viscosity of that resin. And if you're using, you know, if you're mixing up a batch that's going to be wetting out glass, well, thin resin is going to saturate the glass a hell of a lot easier than, say, thicker, cooler resin. And then also, too, having the resin at that temperature, when you catalyze it, it kind of gives it a little bit of a kickstart. Because as soon as you take that resin and you apply it to the surface of, you know, whatever it is you're working on, it's going to cool down almost instantly. But I think you get the point of what it is that I'm trying to show here. So I'm going to go back inside because I'm kind of freezing my ass off. There's a few more key points that I want to talk about here. So now you may be asking yourself, does this really make sense? Is this practical? And I guess, uh, it, honestly, the answer is it depends. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're out there trying to do this type of work in these types of temperatures, uh, most likely you're not doing it for fun. You're doing it on necessity. Uh, you just, the job just needs to get done. So in that type of situation, yes, this is a very good option. I mean, it absolutely works. I've, I've done many, many, many jobs like this uh, in the late fall and especially early spring, uh, where, where it just, the job just needed to get done because the boat was getting splashed. Uh, later that afternoon or first thing the following morning. So time wasn't on your side, you know, this is a, a good option to try and cheat the environment, I guess. Now with something like this, there are some limitations, obviously. Uh, the main one being the size area that you're able to work with. Now these lights, you know, th these are those, the little baby ones. Um, trying to work on like a two by two foot area, I, I think is perfectly reasonable. Now if you need to do a larger area, you can add more lights, providing you, you don't pop breakers. But I mean, you can add more lights to, you know, to warm up a larger size area. Now, one important thing to kind of keep in mind if you decide to go down this road is that the, the, the heat needs to be on the surface, you know, the resin, glass, whatever it is you happen to be doing. The heat needs to be on throughout the duration of its initial cure cycle. So for example, uh, if you're using polyester resin, you know, we were able to get up to 70 some degrees there on the surface within about a half an hour. That is a perfect temperature. Now, if you're going to be doing this work with epoxy, uh, you know, epoxy has a few more options. You can do with a slow, medium, or hard, or slow, medium, or fast hardener. Uh, even in these temperatures, 70, 75 degrees, because the ambient temperature around it is cooler, you're going to want to use the fast hardener. Um, even if that surface is warm, it doesn't matter. You're going to want to use the fast hardener. But getting back to how long you need to maintain that, that level of heat, uh, I would say for polyester resins, at least four or five hours, if you're going to be doing this with epoxy, uh, at least that same amount of time, if not longer. Basically, as long as you can. Uh, but I, uh, like I mentioned earlier in this video, under no circumstances do you leave these lights unattended. Um, it's just, it's not worth it. It's just, trust me, accidents happen. For example, uh, I had someone that I, that I was working with over on Patreon. This is like four, five, six years ago. And they did just that. They had set up, they went, they babysat it throughout the whole time while they had to go to the bathroom. So they left, you know, for like 10 minutes. Well, the wind blew the lights over right on top of the side of the hull. And when he came back, uh, the side of the boat was smoking. It was right on the verge of catching on fire. So, I mean, things happen. Just if you have to leave for whatever reason, unplug the lights. When you get back, plug them back in. You know, just don't stay gone for too long because one thing that composites, you know, regardless of what uh, the base component is, if it's poly, epoxy, whatever it may happen to be, one thing that they do not like is big temperature swings. I mean, it's one thing if it's a little on the cool side, but it's consistent. But what you don't want is for a surface to go 
up to 90, back down to 50, and then back up to 90, and then back down to 50. You don't want those big temperature swings. Consistency is the key for making this work. So real quick, before I sign off here, I wanna do one last temperature check now that we've, we're about eh, 45 minutes, maybe close to an hour into it. Yeah, nothing's changed, nothing's been moved. And we are right at about 90 degrees in the dead center. 92, 94. Now, in all honesty, that might be a little bit warm. You know, if it got to this point, I'd probably back the lights up a little bit, six inches. But overall, even though these are the, the baby halogen lights, they are still throwing off a considerable amount of heat. And if I had to do a project like this, even if it was down, say, about 25, even 30 degrees, this would certainly work. And on that note, I'm going to button this up. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell down below. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance. If you have any questions, comments on anything that uh, I talked about here today, please leave those down below. I'll do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next, well, Sunday for on YouTube, Friday over on Patreon. This has been a Bootworks Today Detection.